Welcome everyone, Quastini here on Serious Gaming with my Open Broadcaster setting guide for 2020 for the best settings for streaming and recording in Open Broadcaster software. Now for recording, you can use something like GeForce Experience from NVIDIA, which will be perfectly fine for the sake of local recording. For streaming, you're most likely going to want to use something like Open Broadcaster software because it is a better program, it is a more flexible program, and it works quite well with Twitch, with YouTube, doesn't matter where you're streaming. It is my recommendation to use something like OBS for the purposes of streaming, something like GeForce Experience for the sake of local recording, though I will cover local recording settings in OBS as well. So when you open Open Broadcaster software, you will have uh, a screen like this. Now, I personally use uh, display capture over here, so capturing a particular display. I've disabled the preview here, though you may want to enable it when you are actually streaming, so to know what you're actually transmitting to people. And one of the things I do like to use is to have an image. So in this case, I have an image that I can bring up. I have a key, uh, I have it key bound. So whenever I press numpad two, uh, it would switch to that image. You know, it activates that image or disables that image, and it covers the entire screen. You can also have that image on only a part of your screen. Say, for instance, you're playing an MMO and you want to cover the chat. Uh, you can use an image in OBS for that particular purpose. Anyway, let's go over to settings. Now in settings, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to video. Yes, video, not output, not stream, nothing like that. Go to video and set your resolution. Make sure it's 1080 uh, P. The reason behind setting this to 1920 by 1080, even though by default it will be 720, is because when it comes to streaming and when it comes to recording in general, you want the resolution of your video to be the same resolution as you're playing at. So if you're playing in 1080p, you want the video to be 1080p. Now, of course, the problem is with higher resolutions than that. Say, for instance, you're playing in 1440p. Well, you can technically uh, record and stream in 1440p, but not actually recommended because many people can't handle video on demand on YouTube with anything higher than 1080p 60fps. And many people certainly can't handle streaming at, you know, watching a stream at 1440p. So you're going to be limited when it comes to streaming and even recordings, I'd say, to 1080p. In that case, you want to use a downscale filter. Now, downscale filter, uh, it's going to have by cubic by default, you're going to want to, uh, to set it to the best option because the options that I'm going to choose for output are so solid when it comes to performance that you don't care about the downscale filter and FPS 60 FPS. Again, it's important to know that in general, you prefer streaming or recording at the same resolution you're playing a game at. You're going to lose some quality if you, you know, you're playing at 1440p or 4k, you're obviously not going to have the same quality if you're not recording at 4k or 1080p and it is going to cause some issues. So for instance, in this case with OBS, you're having to downscale and that consumes resources to maintain any kind of solid uh, video quality. So just be aware of that. And this is certainly a limitation. We just don't have the capability yet of handling 1440p or 4k. I mean, certain people can, but overall certain people can, but not most. So anyway, once you're done with that, go to output. Now by default, you will have this set to X264. Now X264 is a fairly solid uh, encoder, but it has one major issue. Is, is that although it gives you good image quality at a lower bit rate than the other options, it is a performance hog. Now, since most of us don't have super computers at home or a dedicated streaming computer, it's recommended to use your GPU encoder instead of basically stressing out your CPU because that's what the X264 does. It really pushes your CPU. And even with a very powerful CPU, you are going to notice the difference in performance in your game when you're using it, especially if you want high quality. So it is recommended for the vast majority of people to use your GPU encoder. There is an AMD option, though you might have to download a plugin 
a link to that in the description of this video. Also link to a guide that NVIDIA has done for your best open broadcaster settings. Do I agree with everything that, uh, that they said there? Not quite, there are some areas where I do disagree, but for the most part, it's a fairly solid guide and it really goes into the detail as to what each of these options do. So uh, you're going to want to use either your NVIDIA or AMD encoder. Now what's annoying here about the encoder situation is that our GPUs for the last couple of years have had the H.264 encoder on them and the H.265 encoder on them, but you will not see an H.265 encoder option because the websites, Twitch, all that, they don't have it working. Now, I don't exactly know the situation behind that. I hear there's money involved and, you know, companies not wanting to, to give it to Twitch, not make it available, all that kind of stuff. Uh, unless Twitch pays, Twitch doesn't want to pay. That's what I've heard. But anyway, regardless of the situation, we just don't have it available, which is a you know, bloody shame because H.265 is actually better than H.264. It's meant to, right? Better quality with a lower bit rate. That's the whole point. We can't use it yet, though, and probably never will, even given, I guess you could say, the politics involved. Anyway, so um, H.264 codec and for streaming service um, encoder settings. Now, rate control. You're going to want to use CBR, and you're going to want to set the bit rate dependent on two factors. One, your internet speed, and two, the limit on the website. So Twitch, for instance, has a limit of 6,000, so you don't wanna go over that limit. Other websites don't have that much of a limit, can or let you go much higher, but it does depend on what the website that you're streaming on has as a limit. So since most people are going to stream on Twitch, you're not going to want to go higher than 6,000 with uh, CBR, unless maybe you have a partnership, maybe they allow you in that situation to go higher. So in that case, you can go higher. Though, of course, you also have your intern and then speed to consider here. So just be aware of that, um, that when it comes to your internet speed, you should test this yourself. You should check the connection. So if you go to stream, it will, um, it will give you various uh, various options here right when it comes to uh, when it comes to to streaming so for twitch for instance you know you have various servers right that you can um, that you can uh, choose and you should test there are ways of testing what your internet speed is for the twitch server for youtube all that kind of stuff uh, generally if you're in europe you can use frankfurt or london uh, do uh, if you don't have a way of you know testing it uh, Elsewhere, you can go to do a speed test. You can use um, a speed tests for Frankfurt or London if you're in Europe to figure out, okay, how's going to be, how's my internet speed going to be? And you don't want to go just for your speed. You want to go for your portion of a speed, half, a quarter, or even a tenth, depending on what the speed you have available. But anyway, generally don't go over 6,000. You might go lower. Anyway, keyframe interval seconds set it to, leave that to auto. It should be fine. Preset. Quality, leave it at quality. You can go for max quality if you want to stress out your GPU, uh, but for the most part, quality should be fine. You can get better quality. You can get better image quality with max quality, but it can be a performance drain. Profile high. This doesn't really have an impact. Just set it high, leave it there, and then we have uh, look ahead and psycho visual tuning. Now, psycho visual tuning, what it does is enables encoder settings that optimize the use of bitrate for increased per, uh, perceived visual quality, especially in situations with high motion. Since in a lot of games, you do have a lot of motion, it is highly recommended you turn this on unless you have serious performance issues. Now, the question of what you want to turn on or not is look ahead with B frames. Now, B frames give you a better quality, but the problem is they consume a lot of bit rate. So what that results in that when you have scenes in motion, with high B frames, you are going to get worse quality. Look ahead is basically using your GPU to be able to use B frames and not lose quality in motion, not as much. So having look ahead and B frames for B frames is recommended. If not, you can use two B frames if you have it disabled. But this of course depends on your GPU and your performance. 
personally set to four, but I do have a powerful computer. To be fair, I was actually, uh, to be fair, when it comes to the setting, I had the GTX 980 as a GPU, which nowadays is not as great of a GPU. And I was able to record and stream just fine with open broadcaster software without significant performance issues, though, uh, with most of these settings on, though I didn't have look ahead and 4B frames. So I don't know what the impact of that would be. Then we have recording. Now recording uh, type, there are multiple types, but most part go standard recording format. Now NVIDIA recommends you go for MKV. Now the problem with MKV is an issue with uh, rendering software. So with Vegas, yes, you can import an MKV file in Vegas, but it's an experimental option and it pushes you to enable a particular option in Vegas to make that happen. I'd say for the most part, going with MP4 is the recommended option. Now, of course, MP4 has an issue that recordings may be unrecoverable if your system crashes, basically. And I've had this happen multiple times. I've had this happen to me, but for the sake of having a local recording that's gonna work with your rendering software, because if you're recording a video, you're probably going to want to render it in Vegas. Um, for the sake of that, you're probably going to want to use MP4. And the settings here are largely the same with one exception. Uh, rate control CQP, set that to 15. Or you can use CBR. Now, I've personally preferred using CBR at 50,000 kilobits. Now, why 50,000? Well, because if you use NVIDIA GeForce Experience, right, and basically what we're doing here is using the settings, using the power the power of your GPU in much the same way that GeForce Experience would on largely the same settings. We're basically recreating shadow play in OBS. That's what we're doing here. If you're doing that, then using CBR with 50,000 kilobits per second will give you the best quality for 1080p or 1440p. You can go with that particular option if you so desire, or you can use CQP at 15 for that as well. Preset, quality, profile high, look ahead, all the same stuff. And that's really what you need to know about your settings in open broadcaster software. If you do this, if you choose these options, you will get um, pretty high quality and you will also get a minimal performance impact on your system if you so desire. And that's one makes it worth it. Instead of, you know, using a X264 and streaming at 720p, which is I see, something I see a lot of people do. They stream with the X264 and they stream in 720p and obviously their streams are not as good in quality as they could be. We have a chip on our GPUs. We pay for this. Why stress our CPUs? Why have lower performance when we can literally use the hardware that we almost all of us, if we've bought the GPU over the last couple of years have, why not use that and make a, uh, take advantage of that? Questine here, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for more.